Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to set up this 35 foot row of containers and create a sunken container garden. What it's going to do for you, it's going to allow you to conserve resources, it's going to allow you to maximize space, and then these containers we're going to be able to plant two pepper plants. There's about 20 to 25 here, so let's just call it 40 pepper plants in a 35 foot long space, about two or three foot wide when we're done. Here's my forearm to just give you a sense of the length of the con or the width of the container and it's about a forearm deep. You can be a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. I got these really by one saving them. I planted a lot of fruit trees, but I also talked to my neighbors. They saved containers for me and these are all about the same size. Probably close to five gallons, maybe four gallons. You can go to your local nurseries. They do pot recycling. You can ask them for discarded pots, but it's a cheap way to create a nice space where you can really maximize production. A couple of things that we're going to do is we're going to use the native soil partially in the containers. I'm going to show you how to make the mix. We're going to cut out about a third of the bottom so the root systems can grow down into the native soil. We're going to, so to speak, plant it about that deep. We're going to add in compost. I'm using leaf compost. Whatever compost you choose, make sure it's 100% composted. I'll talk more about that. And we're going to mix in peat moss. We want this to be a uh, container mix that really holds water. We're also going to use organic fertilizers to set it up. But this small space, really narrow, good length to it, is going to really allow you to maximize production, save money, and save um, save money by saving on your resources. You just don't have to put a lot into anything but where the tomatoes are good, or where the peppers are going to be growing. We're also going to mulch. It's already mulched down this side. This is my asparagus garden. We're going to mulch down this way too. We're using shredded hardwood. So as the hardwood breaks down, it's going to release nutrients into the system. So that's going to pay off too. And it's going to be really low maintenance. So let me prep the area. Let's get started. And over the next two days, I'm going to set this up as my sunken container garden for pepper plants. So I prepped the area. We're going to send cardboard all the way down the 35 foot length. We're going to leave a gap just like that. Where that container is, we're going to cut into the bottom. That's where they're going to be planted halfway deep. And you just really want to cut the grass back. You don't have to do that, but I like to cut it down um, so there's less green growth on the top. And then I cover it with cardboard. You don't want to use weed block. You want something that's going to break down and the whole space right down the middle there is where the pots are going to go. Let me set this down here. I recommend getting a utility knife, something thick and short. It's easier to control. When you cut, never cut towards yourself or be extremely careful. And you can cut anywhere from a third to a half to the entire bottom out. It really depends on what you want to do. If you're in areas where there's more drought and more uh, problems with moisture, you want to make it wider. So I'm probably going to go maybe about halfway and spin it away so the knife blade is not coming at you. Well, let's see, I don't want to do this left hand, so it's going to be blocked a little bit. Be just be very careful. And we're just cutting through like that. Rotate it away. Stop talking so I can concentrate. You could actually use scissors if the plastic is thin enough. And don't force it, just nice and slow. That's the space, it's perfect. This is probably, you know, more than half, but anything, it's gonna work, and we're gonna sink it down just like that. So let's get to sinking these into the ground, and I'll show you um, how I'm gonna use the native soil. So I took the shovel, made circles, sizes of the base of the containers, all the way down my line. It's not perfectly straight, but it's good enough. And you're basically just putting the shovel right to about here and going around. You're just removing the grass, I don't know, maybe an inch to three inches deep. I took all the circles out, threw them into my raised bed container right here. Clay soil is really filled with wonderful nutrients for your garden. This will be loved by the plants. This year though, I'm just going to cover it over with my 50-50 uh, compost and soil mix. And then if I'm going to plant, say, a tomato here or a squash plant here, I'll just dig a hole, prepare the whole plant right there. Next year, I'll turn this all over and mix it together well. That's just a way to save time, get your beds filled, and not spend a lot of money. So all the holes are in. 
And the whole goal is then we're going to come back, I'll show you how to do that. Dig this flat so that the container bottom lays flat on here so that the root system can grow into here. And then the depth, I just wanted to be clear, you could just put it right to here as long as it makes solid contact with the earth I, and then just mound up with, compo with uh, mulch. I'm using shredded hardwood. It is really nicely shredded. It breaks down real quickly, which means that over time as this breaks down, the nutrients will get washed and taken into the root zone of the pepper plants. I'm probably going to go about this deep and then just bring the earth up and then mound my mulch up to here. If you're in a zone where you get less rain, more heat, more drought, whatever, maybe you come up a little bit higher. Uh, that will just help this area manage water so your pepper plants do really well. So let's get to setting up the ground so that the pots will go in, the containers will go in nice and flat, and I'll show you how I make the container mix. Now once you take the circle out, the easiest way to really prepare this is just to use a little hand shovel. Again, I cut out the bottom that size. You know that it fits and you can decide how many inches you want to go down and you just want to plunge straight down around your circle. And this is probably the easiest and quickest way to take care of it. I like to use my hands. This is all going to go into a wheelbarrow and I'll show you how I mix it up. But you can see that now it's starting to get pretty flat. That's the whole goal. And then the container is going to just get dropped right in like that. Let me move this forward and you can see bottoms perfectly flush with the ground. And again, go down as far as you like. I think I'm going to stay something like that because I've decided I am going to mound up the mulch around it. So here are the three circles dug out nice and flat. I measured so that there's about two or three feet worth of space between the beds on the right and the container bed. I just used a flower box to help me go down the line. Nothing you know, I do is 100% perfect. My goal is 90%. Life is a lot less stressful that way. So dug down to about an inch. Couple of tips, the deeper you go down, the more soil you'll have to fill your container. So you will have to spend a little bit less money that way. And you can see that they all lie pretty flat, pretty good straight line. And I'm filling the wheelbarrow with the soil. We'll get to that in a second, but I'm going to work my way all the way down, just creating a line like that. If some of these are off in height, don't worry about it. You can just, once this is filled, gently pull it up, shake it, and you can adjust the heights if you want it to be all level going all the way down. So when it comes to container mixes, you don't have to follow a perfect recipe. You're really working off principles. You want at least a half of your container mix to be one-third peat moss, cocoa core, something that's going to absorb water. This is peat moss, so it's about one-third peat moss, one-third of the uh, natural soil that I pulled out of the hole when I was, you know, setting the pots. And this is my 50-50 uh, topsoil, or I'm sorry, raised bed fill that I purchased. It's 50% uh, topsoil, 50% leaf grow. You could do half peat moss, half the native soil, however you want. You really just want to represent something that's going to hold water. That's the whole key to this container system. We're not going to over fertilize now. You know, I recommend you use a container to mix your um, ingredients together. About a handful of any organic fertilizer and then you're just going to mix it together. Now the clay is heavy. If you have a lot of clay you might need more peat moss. We'll see how it looks. We're going to mix all of this together. If you're looking to exercise, it's a great forearm exercise. Break up the clumps. Toss out any rocks. And again, you're looking to make sure it's loose, it's got something that's going to hold water. It doesn't have to hold water like your containers that you're using on your deck or on the ground somewhere because we've cut a hole in the bottom of the containers and the root systems will eventually get down there. Don't over fertilize at this point. This will be um, a couple part series, so please subscribe. I'll show you how I set up the container mix with the fertilizers, take care of them, 
and plant them probably in the next video. So this looks pretty good when you break it, I mean when you squeeze it together it breaks apart real easily. That's kind of what you're going for and I think I'm just going to keep it just like this. I could add in a little more peat moss if I wanted but this is going to be the basic container fill. Alright, let me get to that. So I have in six containers. See the circles vary. In the bottom I have about two tablespoons of any organic fertilizer. Remember your organic fertilizer has to be broken down by soil life. So we're putting this down in the bottom. It'll help introduce good microbiology to the container. It'll bring in worms, all kinds of things, and they'll begin to incorporate into your container mix, which your plants will love. But you can drop this in at the bottom. It'll be all broken down and ready for when the plant root systems get down there. All right, now I need to fill this. And as you fill it, you want to leave about that much room because we're going to mulch and you also want to rim here so that when we water, we can fill this up with water and it will all soak down. As you're going down your line, fill it up. You don't need to pack it down. Just give it a shake, let it level off, add in some more if you need to. You want to also make sure you do have some space here because the containers tend to taper outward and you don't want the rims smashing into each other. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're setting it up. All right, I'm going to finish this whole area up, show you what it looks like, and we'll end the video there. The container garden is completed. Please subscribe. I'll take you through planting and harvesting all the vegetables we put in there. That can certainly hold two pepper plants, a single determinate tomato, maybe a bush variety cucumber or squash. In my upcoming video, we're going to be taking care of this space. It's just going to be a standard mounded earth bed. But let me just show you how I finished up. Drop down the mulch. Beneath the mulch is cardboard lined up mostly straight all the way down. You can see all the plastic on the left. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com and also check out my YouTube videos. And if you subscribe, you'll see this whole space come to life with 44 pepper plants.